come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Thanks for rejoining us. Or, hey, if this is your first rodeo, thanks for hopping on board the Freak Show train. We're a train now. Uh, All right. We're a wagon train. I feel like I'm kind of in a Western mood, you it know, kinda after, goes, right? kind of goes into yeah. this. All right. Yeah. I'll give you that. Definitely not the quiet car. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we do is we watch a movie and then we talk about it for your listening pleasure as we try to sort out what we have just watched moments ago. Uh, but, uh, before we do anything else, we ask that you go on over to wherever you found us, be it iTunes or Stitcher or iHeartRadio or Podbean or wherever, and give us a Podbean. like, hit the star rating or give us a review even better. Cause if you do that, we'll read it on our show later during Igor's mailbag where mm-hmm. we'll, we'll have our little guy come in and bring us our mail. Uh, it's a exciting segment of our show. It's a Podbean. Uh, it's a like really grow podcast, right? Yes, little, yeah, it's a beans. podcast yeah. farm. Podcast farm, yeah, I like that. It's sprouting up, it's like a nursery where you go and you get one already started. So it's got like it's got past the <laughs> shitty stage, you know. Sure, right, it's, yeah. It, they're season one in. is done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're into season two. We know who our characters <laughs> oh, are. Maybe that's yeah, yeah. We're established. Yeah, they're settled yeah. in. You know, they've gotten the audio kinks worked out too. Yeah. Those things. If you're yeah. listening to us on Podbean, let us know. Our <laughs> analytics tell us most of you are listening to us on Apple Podcasts. I would it's say like, so. Yeah, it's, everybody has an iPhone. It's like everybody that I know seems to have, uh, you know, Androids. But yeah. I like, mean, I listen on my work computer, and that's a Mac, so I listen, uh, listen to so that. Yeah. probably count. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, then. Well, good to know. Right. Um, so who are these internet radio superstars? <laughs> Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we're watching a movie that was chosen by... Sean. What did we watch tonight? Uh, we watched 1996's Tremors 2 Aftershocks. Why? Uh, because it is the sp- a spring of sequels, Colin. Is and it? It's still, it's like, this is the so last it- one. Okay. <laughs> I, what was it like out today, Colin? Cold and rainy. That's spring, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. It was very warm. It we're was awesome. S- we're squeaking in one last, well, this is Illinois. It's going to snow tomorrow, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. We're squeaking in one be a last tornado sequel. in the afternoon. And- yeah. One last sequel for the spring. All right, so let's, uh, since this is the final spring of sequels episode. Sure, and we'll never have a sequel again on this right. show. Mm-hmm. I think we've probably talked about this at length, but what is your fascination with, uh, like, this is a very specific type of sequel that you enjoy mining. What What is what, what is that? Maybe you've identified it for me. A specific type of sequel? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, because Sean uh, snuck one in on us tonight. Uh, generally, we watch theatrical uh... films. Or at least films that have been uh, produced for a theatrical market. Sure. But this one was made for the VHS market. Direct to video. Direct to video sequel. Yes, so it was. So this is what Still I'm Still a movie, Colin. Well, you I brought... hate your discrimination <laughs> towards what you consider this inferior format. Is it a movie, Michaela? <laughs> um, I mean, technically... It, it, oh my god technically it is a movie right. I mean, it, you steven spielbergs of the yeah. world it's looking a movie looking down movie, on the movies that are distributed through different platforms than theater was the first one in theaters yes really uh, yeah i was a theatrical kind of film. find that hard to believe but yeah, it was that was a it was a sleeper hit yes in 1994 uh three or four, or three or four. my memory of any movie in this franchise is constant marathons on tnt was so how they they this were like like back to back all all of them. Yeah, this is gonna be Non-stop. the easiest uh, uh, film franchise to buy and just keep playing mm-hmm. forever and ever. I'm sure USA did it a lot. That's where I saw mm-hmm. these movies. I think that's probably how everybody who's listening to us right now has uh, come in contact with the Tremors movies. Mm-hmm. Like nobody so. saw it in the theater. No, probably not even. I can a whole almost lot guarantee of them for the it. second one, nobody saw it. I, I would I would say <laughs> I've never. Almost con- guarantee. I would say it. I've never consciously made an effort to watch these movies. I've have never you, have done you seen that. The first one? Yes. Okay. But like I've seen it because it was on TV okay. at a time where I needed to watch something on TV. Okay. I never consciously set out to watch these movies ever. I, saw, I got to see the How first one. I didn't see it in theaters, but I saw it before there were six other Tremors movies. There are six of these. Two TV a series. TV no, series. One TV series. I tried to reboot TV series. Which brought, brought Kevin Bacon back. It did. Has anyone seen that pilot episode? 
Did that get scripted? Oh, wait, are we to, in case we're dropping something on you that you didn't know? Uh, they did actually bring Kevin Bacon back. They this did. is like two years ago, right? Yes. This is like uh, 2017, maybe. Yes. They brought Kevin Bacon back. He shot a pilot. Yeah, because he's like, you know, I'm done with that. What was it? The forgotten? The, 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 following, the, following, the following. Which was actually like started off pretty good. That's what I hear. It started, started off, off good. really good. And then for two seasons, it was, it was pretty like, gory for a network TV show. It's, nice. mm-hmm. it's no Hannibal, I'll bet. But it was a big Hollywood actor doing like network TV. Mm-hmm. Unheard of. Was he one of the biggest ones? I think probably the biggest actor doing a doing like a, a network Fox, a Fox show. Yeah, network Fox show. show. Yeah, yeah probably. he was probably one of the, and one of the earliest, I'd say. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so after that, he's like, "Well, oh, fuck it, Charmers." Everybody seems to like Charmers. He's fine. He's like uh, uh, embracing his past. Yeah, he's finally he, going back to these yeah. things. He's like Friday the Thirteenth. I'm cool with that now. Right. I, he's I, doing I, that commercial. He did that commercial yeah. where he played all his characters. Was mm-hmm. that like Direct TV? I or think something? so. It was one of the yeah because there's a Leguizamo one like that too. Yeah. So he's embracing his past, and he's like, you know what? I like that character. Let's go back and do it again. It's funny how they do that. They always mm-hmm. do the Revisionist whole thing. history. Yeah. Well, it's like they're embarrassed of these movies right. that we love. The, the movies know? that got them there. Yeah. yeah. And we love them, and they yes. never talk about them, and they're like- Look at you, no, Matthew no, no, McConaughey yeah. and Renee Zellweger. Yeah. yeah. That's what makes the, the Crystal Lake Memories documentary about Friday the 13th, what makes that kind of hard to watch at some points is how many, like, people like that won't even come back to the documentaries. Like I know that was like a Kickstarter one and stuff, but it's always really sad to watch these horror documentaries where they have to talk around the famous people that like sure. can't even be bothered to do a talking head. Yeah, but because whoa, they got Corey Feldman to like do the intros and all that yeah, stuff. On yeah. There. I was oh, kind of oh. surprised Monica Kina showed back up for the Freddy versus Jason one. Well, what the mm-hmm. fuck is she doing? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, Monica exactly. Yeah. But at least she like seemed to have some like, this was fun. I don't mm-hmm. see why people are down on this stuff. That's I what like when they have that attitude. Down for in history on her tombstone mm-hmm. monica freddie versus jason kena yeah. was she in night of the demons yeah everybody mm-hmm. saw that too mm. man of the house with tommy lee jones <laughs> oh, God, <that> movie. <laughs> and the cheerleaders <laughs> yeah i think she was mm. the never sleep again the nightmare on elm street documentaries like that too talking around patricia arquette and johnny depp <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah johnny. that's the one we're waiting for right it's johnny depp well i guess he did appear in freddie's dead so that was his acknowledgement yeah. of the and, series. Yeah. And he always said he would have come back for New Nightmare, but no one asked him. Mm. Because Wes Cause they was, probably assumed like he that's would what Wes say said. No. He's yeah. like he assumed he would want to come back, and Johnny mm. Depp was always like, "Yeah, I'd do it. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's why you got to ask. That's why you gotta nothing ask. ventured, nothing gained." As they're mm. There you go. Yeah, uh, I can't remember where we were going. No, this, we but, were okay. On the, your specific mm. uh, type of sequel. Because uh, the only reason I ask this is because uh, it seems like there are two movie series. That uh, Sean would mine every single episode. No, there's three. There's Halloween. Sure. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we've Halloween. watched more of those than anything else. Uh, Critters. There you go. Yeah. And Tremors. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the Halloween series, at least all of those are theatrical films. <clears throat> yes. Uh, the first two Critters were theatrical. Yes. And the first Tremors was theatrical. Yes. How many Tremors movies are there? Did we? There are think? six Tremors movies and counting. I'm pretty sure they'll make another one. When was the last one made? Like a year ago. So still 20, going. 2018. Still making Tremors Another, movies. Quote unquote, I guess it's horror comedy at this point. I guess they It always label. has been. Yeah. It's it's always, it's, it's always, I, was, I would say the first one more sci fi horror because it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's funny, but it's not like they really veer into comedy for some of these movies. So you were never a fan of uh, like Stargate? <laughs> Okay. No. Well, I mean, Stargate has one movie. I don't think there's any sequels. And six TV shows. But there's like six yeah, TV yeah. shows. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think what's another one. Oh, one just got away from me. I was thinking, uh, oh, oh, shit. It's gone. Mm. Point Starship is Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers. Uh, I've only seen one of them. I've only seen the first one. I've only seen the first one. Why did you stop there? Uh, I got what I needed to get out of that. Okay. But for Tremors, uh, there was more to explore. There is. Colin, because first go through, there's more monsters and they change and it's different iterations through every movie. Whoa. Until it gets to just shitty iterations, So the same which, and that's, and that, that your mileage may vary on which monsters are shitty <laughs> because in the third one, we get to ass blasters, my friend. What's an ass blaster? An ass blaster is like a flying graboid who shoots fire out of his ass and he flies around. Oh, that's how it's like a rocket. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want to go sit down and watch part three right Kinda, now? Yeah. Like that sounds interesting at least. Uh, oh boy. And part four has, uh, 
baby graboids because they show the uh, they come out as eggs and they're little graboids. They're about I'd say football size that jump through the air and attack and kill people. Why is that scary? I'd, it's not. Yeah. Oh no, scary! Yeah. No, no, no. It's no, just no. we have to do something new right. to justify set, a sequel. It's so, also set in the old west. Oh, oh yeah? see, okay, Tremors that's more interesting. Set in the old west. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're a relative of, I think Bert's. Uh, um, Michael Gross plays a relative of Bert's, but he's you know still uh, Michael Gross. Okay. This became Michael Gross's series. Yeah, uh, as it went on from three. Well, actually, and let's, let's talk about Michael Gross okay. for a little while, because uh, people in my generation remember him as the dad on Family Ties, the Michael mm-hmm. J. Fox TV show. But I think most people will probably go in on his tombstone, Michael Tremors Gross. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> right? What I would else say does so. he do? I couldn't even tell you another thing he's been in besides Family Ties and That's this. That's it. That's all I got. Yeah. I'm sure he's showing up in a movie here or there, but probably TV oh, movies, God, I Lifetime got movies, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I or got... direct other directed films. Sure, of films. course. But I'm pretty sure he's like he executive produces like these movies now. Is, does he? I'm pretty sure he's a producer on. He's them. like, fuck it, I'm gonna like, own it. Yes. This, this is, is my meal tra- mm-hmm. meal ticket right here. Yep. Mila Jovovich has her fucking Resident Evils and. Uh, Kate Beckinsdale has the Underworlds, but Michael Gross is like, I know when I have something, I'm going to hold on with both hands. Yep. And ride this sucker into the sun. No matter how embarrassing it gets <laughs> for the things they make him do in these movies. Okay, so he started out in the first Tremors movie, if you recall. It's uh, Kevin Bacon is the star of that movie. Yeah. Fred Ward is also in it. They're the co-stars. And Michael Gross and Reba McIntyre are kind of cast against type at that point in mm-hmm. time. Uh, as these kind of nutso uh, survivalist, uh, you know. Doomsday preppers. Yeah. Kind of. Which is the source of a lot of comedy, I think. Well, the first movie is kind of a comedy horror yeah. m- movie. Um, and so by the time you get to Tremors 2, Michael Gross returns, but he's not like in a leading role. No. Fred Ward returned to this one. Right. He's and, he's the lead. Yeah. But then Michael Gross somehow. It's like co-second lead. So do they keep on, here's my question for you, I guess, having not seen these, in each of the other movies, do they bring on the uh, the Kevin Bacon stand-in, <laughs> right? <clears throat> in part three is when uh, Michael Gross kind of comes to the front. Like, it's his movie. It follows him. There are plenty of secondary characters that surround him. Um, part three is back to perfection, so obviously they go back to the town. And there's uh, Mindy from the first one, the little blonde girl. She's back in it, same actress and everything. Mindy. Uh, oh, the yeah, okay. From uh, Jurassic Park. What? That's her. Is That's the same. Cow? Yeah, it's the same one. Yeah. Um, so she comes back in that. Uh, like Victor Wong's daughter mm-hmm. is back running the store, so she's in that. And then a bunch of other people. Um, and um, Melvin. Melvin from the first oh, one okay, comes okay, back. Okay, okay. So yeah. he's surrounded with secondary characters that are familiar, but when then he gets to the fourth one, obviously they go back in time, so it is really his movie. Okay. Fifth one, uh, we bring in uh, Jamie Kennedy, which is a clear what? upswing for any franchise. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's no way that can backfire on you, right? Yeah. Uh, so that happened. He came back for the sixth one, I'm pretty sure, although I don't know. I didn't watch that Oh, so that one. Jamie Kennedy is now like, uh, that's what he's doing with his time. Yeah. Co-starring with Michael Gross. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he plays his son in that movie. In his ongoing... illegitimate son, I believe. Awesome. God, this could not sound worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I mean, this is like the definition of the cash grab. Yeah. Right, I mean. But is there cash to be made on like Apparently. five movies deep? Like, But they're not getting theatrically released at that point, right? No, but there's so this market. The I mean, from? at least in the 90s when Tremors 2 came out, I mean, I can see in Tremors however many of them were released in the, in the VHS era, deep. there was a time when basically you could make anything and fucking put it on a, on a video store shelf and people would rent it mm-hmm. because there was just a, you know, you're going to the store and like, what am I going to take home? And you take home six to 12 movies. Oh yeah. I oh, rented yeah. them to people. I used to work as a clerk Stacks. in a video store. Stacks of movies. Those clear movie cases. And they had to come back like, you know, two days later or something like that, three days max. And they'd fucking clear them all. It's amazing. Mm. But all like those. within the past 10 years, though, where is the money to be made? And there's been at least, what, two that's, of them in the past 10 years? They got to be made really cheap and they got to be really going off that name value. Now, the Tremors movie. Tremors still has name but they're value. Still, like, are, they're either going direct to video or direct to TV or something, right? Definitely direct to video. Yeah, well, now they just go direct to streaming that's somewhere. Saying, yeah. like, at least on all yeah. the streaming platforms. And Yeah, I think this one, uh, six may have gone to Netflix and Blu ray, like, same day type mm. of thing. Mm hmm. 
Yikes. Good for the up. Tremors people. How long did the series last? <laughs> I mean, it's oh, the series one season, like thirteen episodes. That's not great. The Sci-Fi On Channel, the sci-fi or something. Channel, yeah. yeah. Okay. Who also did the? I think they did the. They put up the money for the Kevin Bacon reboot that never, uh, never materialized. That was the question that you would ask. Well, what never happened materialized, to that? but they did shoot the pilot. They did shoot a pilot. Yeah. They shot a Tremors pilot with Kevin Bacon. I saw a trailer for it. Can there's a trailer for it? They're still at um, Texas Film Festivals. They are showing, cl- I think, only clips at this point. Oh. But Kevin Bacon is there to show clips of the Tremors pilot. Will Netflix not even bite on this? Wow, it must be bad, huh? I, I don't know what happened. It must be bad for them to be like, mm, for sci-fi to be like. With Kevin mm, Bacon. Like yeah. a commitment Bacon from a go, star. Nah. You know, well, you're going to watch it for that. Yeah. As Everything- Tremors run its court. It's probably the budget. Probably. Because you got to actually have, you're either doing it one or two ways. It's a movie series about a bunch of uh, underground giant worm creatures that come out of the ground and attack people. And that's either practical effects, mm-hmm. which cost money, or CG, which costs money if you want it to look decent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you've watched at least four of these movies. Five of them. Okay. At one point, do they just become 100% CG? Yeah. <laughs> see i knew it i knew it just at what point does that have i bet you they don't even do the little burrowing no. underground thing anymore and they do that because that's kind of the key thing but they don't look like graboids anymore they first of all they change the monster enough where i think in the third one you uh, you may see they have uh there's a white graboid named el blanco but he's all cgi um and you don't see him much and then by the fourth movie cgi Fifth movie, they're, uh, that's when they go to Africa, and it's a different breed of Graboid, so it looks nothing like the original monsters. Just so they can, Just get, so they can like, streamline it for CG? I think so, because that's when they have the snake the mm. snake tongues come back, but they also look nothing like the yeah, original. Yeah, where the snake tongues go in this movie? I know. You remember, well, I guess that was a big part. They had, part. like, personalities. Well, yeah, because the first one kind of did that thing where uh, you didn't know what it was. You knew there was something under the ground, right? And these snake creatures would come up, and it's like, oh, there's snake creatures. And then the reveal was Mm -hmm. there's a gigantic, you know, worm thing, like a dune sandworm crawling around under the ground. But uh, the second movie basically forgets all about the tongue snakes because we've already seen the giant thing. Right. And so we're just doing giant, you know, worms until the second half when then it's like, and we got like, these baby ones. And the worms have turned. Yeah. Yeah. The baby ones don't seem that terrifying, honestly. Like, it doesn't seem like that big of a threat. Well, they look like to you, like uh, buzzards? Kind of, yeah. Turkeys. Yeah, like little They're wor- bipedal, vultures. yeah. They yeah. just kind of run around. Featherless turkeys running around? A little bit. Little blind yeah. featherless turkeys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it looks like you kind of kick them over. It feels <laughs> like you'd be able yeah. to, right? Yeah. With their, they should have, like, little T-Rex arms. It- yeah, yeah, yeah. After you. maybe they do that in the third one. Mm, just ass blasters. Okay, fine. What? <laughs> There's no uh, the turkey ones don't come back. I think he shoots a bunch of them at the beginning, and they all change into ass blasters, and we don't get any shriekers. They're shriekers. They're called shriekers, by the way. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I think we get shriekers at the beginning, and I think that's it for them in the third one. What are they called in the fourth one? They're ass blasters. Again? Uh, the fourth one? Uh, Do they actually that? refer to them as Aspas? Yes. Oh, that wow. is their official name is Aspas. Yes. Given to them by Michael Gross, no doubt. I think actually uh, Victor Wong's daughter calls him Aspas. Oh, well, it would because he named right. him the first he name. Right. He named the <laughs> Grab. <laughs> right. Yep. And then it just goes back to Graboids. And, and uh, Ass Blasters show up in Africa. There's African Ass Blasters. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. Are you sure you don't want to watch any of yes, these? Yes, I, I am sure. I got sure. four of them here. Okay, but why? Why? This is what the... See, this is where we're trying to get into Sean's psychology. Mm-hmm. Michaela hears all this, and she's like, no, I'm good. And to be honest, Sean, Because I know I also that it's going to be diminishing camp. returns as, yeah. it, as you go down the chain uh, of sequels. Having made the journey, you are correct. Yeah. It is diminishing returns <laughs> as you move through this series. I will, I'm 100% with you. I've that. already seen the best version of this. I could see. Why would I keep going? See, maybe that's my take on these things. That's why I don't ah. pursue these sequels. Like, I get a movie, usually, and I go like, okay, that was a good story. Mm-hmm. And generally, it doesn't seem like there's any reason for a lot of movies to continue. Right. Right. But then they come out with like four of them and you're like, oh, my God, like taken. Right. How many of those are there? There's two. There's two sequels and a TV show. 
This is about a guy who has a special set of skills. And his daughter gets kidnapped and he goes and gets her back. And yeah. That's know, the story. Right. And we all probably would love that movie a lot more if they hadn't made all those sequels. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that first movie was like a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. And like the sequels kind of pissed on that legacy a little bit just by existing. I you know? Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it does. I suppose that's the thing. Like, it almost seems to me like Tremors 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in a TV series cheapens tremors yeah so exactly it, it's it doesn't have the same power where are all the rosemary's be- baby sequels they're not the- <laughs> well actually yeah. there are whatever happened to rosemary's baby well yeah <laughs> well what i'm gonna ask you come we were talking about this off mic we we're talking about uh movies like annabelle right yeah why do you keep why you you keep watching or anything in the conjuring universe like they're making sequels and all that stuff why do you yep. keep going for th- those specific the ones? Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's there's all the discrimination wow you. i've seen all the halloween movies sean because i go to takes? see them in the theater no uh yeah is it a case of diminishing returns with those no i think because here's the thing well i mean no actually in that case i'd say the second annabelle is in that specific case, second one's better than the first one. So why would you? Okay, so the second one's better than the first one. All right. The second one is better than the first one, but, um, but if the first one was not so good, why would you? Why would you just not be like, nah, I'm good? Right, right. That, that's the question. Yeah. Uh, because I think by the very virtue right now in today's extremely competitive marketplace, the fact that a movie gets a theatrical release kind of says like it's cleared the bar mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, like. Because producers have to sit there and go like, well, Annabelle was a hit. Let's make another one because people will see it. And then they figure like, how many who's going to go see this and how much resources do we put into it? Mm. And what talent do we hire for it? You know, do we try to make a good one because people saw the first one, but didn't really care for it. We can fix that in the second one. Right. Or do they go like, well, people are going to show up and, you know, but this is about how much we can make. This is our bottom line. This is how much we can spend. And then it becomes like, do we want to actually put this in theaters? And then it becomes the case of uh, what's the fuck? The Ted Bundy movie that uh, just came out. They got dumped to Netflix. Mm-hmm. Yes, I said dumped to Netflix. I know Netflix got dumped. bid on it, but it's oh. Netflix picks up shit that would not survive in a theatrical mm-hmm. environment. Like Absolutely. Uh, what the, the Blumhouse has a like a dump shoot, right? Yeah. That one channel leads to Netflix. Yeah. And they just go, here's Mercy Black. You know, Cloverfield Paradox. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So, okay, yeah. There, there you go. That's this is a better series <laughs> yeah. to compare it to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's true. Annabelle two clears the bar, <laughs> right? Of like, if we put this in theaters and with enough effort behind it, people will go see it. And Cloverfield Paradox was clearly made for theaters, and Paramount yeah. went. Yikes. You know, we're crunching the numbers here, kid. I don't think this one's, we have a better chance to just spring it on people right. on Netflix. Just we'll spend the money there. on a super one, one ad on the Super Bowl, and that's it. That'll be the end of the start and the end of our marketing campaign. That's all they oh, but that was brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. That was, that yeah. got everybody to watch. I watched it, but right. man, when you were watching it, you're like, this is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Was that my worst pick for? Yeah, it was. I think it yes, was. It was. Yeah. was it? Yeah. yeah. It was God. Oh, well, I think, yeah, bad. I might have gone with you on that one. It's mm-hmm. just like, oh, we're Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then movies like Gotti get into theaters. And... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was that a Fathom event thing? No, that no, was a movie no, pass. No, movie pass was, they made that movie. So they're already in the pocket. Oh, of no. Yeah. So. John Travolta <laughs> made that movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sean, how do you feel being a former movie pass subscriber, knowing that your money probably went to fund that movie? Uh, I mean, uh, on a certain level, I'm proud. <laughs> You're like, I made this possible. <laughs> look, look, what I, look what I did. Look what I, I made still possible. haven't seen this. Am I going to? I don't know. Like, I'm curious about it because it sounds like one of those good, bad movies. I mean, there's a lot of boring parts, but the first 40 minutes are absolutely insane. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think like you, you may have missed the peak the peak impact it could have on you culturally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you, that train has, has left the station. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how you, I don't know you how you get feel in about there. I think so. I think you had to get in there like when but it was But it's hot. not going to be like the nostalgic look back at like, you know, few people saw this, but I did. In the theater, Gotti. Oh, Holly, you have that was Holly and I. Yeah. There was we were kind of hoping we'd have the theater all to ourselves just so we could like goof on it and mystery science theater it up. But there was like eight other people, and I was kind of like, "Well, wow, okay." Other, I'm I was kind of like, "Are they here because they legitimately want to see this?" Like I was really curious about their journey, <laughs> you know? Like there was, there was a couple 
like, and I think they were the only other people in the theater with me up in the thing. And I'm like, they want to see this. Like, they're here because they're excited to watch this. Holly movie. and I just kept like cracking up laughing and stuff. And then we were like, oh shit, we're probably ruining this experience for these other people that are like genuinely <laughs> yeah. here to watch this movie. Like, this is a, a serious drama. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um. So, Tremors 2. Tremors 2. That's right. We're here at last, listener. Tremors 2. Takes place. <laughs> Directed by S.S. Wilson. Oh, yeah. Who's he? I want to say this because. It sounds well, like he, a fake name. <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't <laughs> it? Uh, or at least a ship's name. Um, he he wrote the first one. but By he, himself? Uh, I think it was him and another guy. So okay. he finally steps in the direction. See the story guy and the other guy is the screenplay guy kind of, kind of, kind of um, deal? I, maybe. Because it keeps going on through a couple of these movies. He, did, he directed part four as well. Um, and I think he's written or done story by on. He's the, the Don Mancini. Basically. Of the Tremors, uh, yes. yeah, okay. Uh, oh, there's but, a, that, but there's another one, the Child's Play movies. Sure. All right, I have seen all of those. Yes. And uh, the last two, I think, were direct to video. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, yes. you got me. Which is another movie that we brought on here. That's that right. direct to video. Damn it all to hell. But I brought it, so I, <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of so still sits on me. The curse of Chucky, <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's, uh, S.S. Wilson is a writer, and he's written some um, some things you may have heard of. Oh shit! Here it uh, comes. Here it comes. Uh, let's see. Mm, short circuit. What? Really? <laughs> short circuit. Batteries not included. Seriously? Uh, okay, this guy's got a thing. Short circuit two. Well, I would hope. Then he wrote Tremors. Uh, then the classic Ghost Dad. Oh wow! Really? Mm-hmm. Ghost Dad. Ghost Dad. Mm. Uh, Heart and Souls. I don't know what that. Where is. are we looking at? Like taste on this guy? Or like where are we? Where do we fall on this? I think uh, so. You know. Well, I think. I like we're tremors. gonna get to, we're gonna get to taste. Short circuit's pretty awesome. Batteries not included is good. Yeah. Uh Tremors 2 Aftershocks, Wild Wild West. No. No. <laughs> oh my god, no. Wild Wild That's West. <laughs> unfortunate. Wow. Well, you know, did his script get all mangled? We don't know, but uh, we, uh, especially with the producer that was on yeah. it, uh, yeah. John Peterson. Yeah, that oh, was okay. insane. Yeah. He's yeah. the yes. guy who wanted the polar bears in the fucking and the spider Batman movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, it's and he, he's the reason that there's a spider in that movie. Kevin yes. Smith has a very long story he tells about that if I'm sure he's told it on multiple podcasts. I've yes. heard it on several myself. But the evening with yeah. and what have you. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gets uh, he gets a story by in Tremors Three: Back to Perfection. Uh, he was the creator and uh, writer of uh, Tremors the TV series. There were 33 episodes. Uh, my bad there. So Whoa, there were so way more. like a couple seasons. That's two seasons. seasons. Feels like two seasons in there. So yeah. damn. Uh, characters and story on Tremors Four. He also directed, and then based on the characters for Tremors: A Cold Day in Hell. Can I back him up for a second? Is sure. Michael Gross the star of Tremors the series? Of course, yes. Okay, so he did 33 episodes? Oh, yeah. Jesus episodes. Christ. This man <laughs> is Tremors. <laughs> he is Tremors. That's it. Wow. Okay, so Burt Gunnerson. Gunner? Gummer. Gummer. Burt Gummer. <laughs> Gunderson? We're yep. getting into... We've jettisoned Reba McIntyre because she's sensibly said, I'm not coming back for another one. Right. You can't pay me enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When well, it's going direct to video, no, sorry. I just want to play to theatrical audiences. Yes. Kevin Bacon's like, this is before he had to eat crow and work on fucking Fox TV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a bunch of people out there who are sitting there going like, what are you talking about? I love, you know. Okay. But an actor going to TV still to me is, if you're going right. to network TV, like if you're going, if you're Meryl Streep. If you're going to prestige television, it's Meryl Streep's is going to HBO. Yeah, to go yeah. to HBO. Yeah. It's like uh, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. Everybody's been going to HBO for years. Not right? only that, but not only was he going to network TV, but he was going to a crime procedural on network TV, which like that could run for forever. He could mm-hmm. be stuck doing that for a long time, uh, sure. you know, or, you know. You know what I yeah. think they do those, though? They usually, they shoot on a Hollywood lot. And these guys live like, you know, it's, right. you can get your right. driver picks you up in the morning and takes you there and you basically still have a life. Your kids go to school. And, all. and that's why you take something like that. Yeah. You at least get a, a more than halfway decent like idea for a series. And you're like, I can do that. That sounds yeah, cool. And you got a commitment for this is income and a job. For- right. And I'm sure he signed. He's like, mm-hmm. I want a three year contract and that's it. Like, yeah. I'm sure there's a limit to what he'll sign like, up for. I will say the following was probably like. It was like Dexter from the perspective of the police, right. like for network audiences. So it was like people who don't want to take in everything that comes with Dexter and on Showtime, like yeah. it's watered down for them. So like, do you remember when they aired Dexter on CBS? I do, because I, I saw it. I remember watching. <laughs> yeah, it on I was like, CBS. how are they gonna? It was butchered to all hell. How long did they air it? Uh, they well, I think they started doing it in what, the second season. It wasn't the first season. No, it was the first was season. It? it was the ice truck killer yeah. season. It was during a writer's strike. Yeah, oh, because really? They didn't have they any did it shows. after nine. 
Yeah, but, they were like, let's put Dexter on CBS. I forgot CBS and Showtime well. share. No, yeah. because the audience, right. obviously, for network television was like, what the? This is beyond the pale. Yeah. And then you realize what how big the divide is between premium and, TV. And they saw an edited system. version, yeah. too. They saw yeah. an extremely edited version. Well, and it's still morally. Was like, yeah. There's so um, much. Yeah. Yes. There's but so then much innuendo. Too, well. And then Hannibal's on NBC doing yeah. the shit it did. Yeah, yeah but at least there was, you're in the protagonist is you know not a serial killer that's where dexter is like over the line even right. though he's mm-hmm. killing basically the bad guys the animals but... eating people and making uh, it yeah, look yeah, delicious yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i'm surprised that show got on so uh, that show just like flew under the radar somehow you know i don't it's because like bates motel i would not say is like a horror series at all that's a fucking right. drama if mm. nothing else that is a boring ass show i don't know if you all ever watched it. my, it. my yeah. family watches it i never got into it yeah, it's boring okay. yeah i couldn't take it mm-hmm. no because like uh the sequels i also can't do tv remakes and stuff that i didn't see lethal weapon the tv show um, oh no. i think you're uh, fine much- yeah yeah you'll well, be i think fine. you're okay <laughs> yeah i think i nope i got out of the broadcast network game before i had to sit there and watch that one so no Did i think i the taken tv show no no god no well, or the rush hour tv show the rush oh, hour TV show. unfortunately uh bill uh paxton died and we didn't get the training day tv show he was <laughs> right he did do that didn't yeah. he damn mm-hmm. we have no ideas mm-hmm. But nope. instead, you watch all these sequels. <laughs> okay, bring it back around. Uh, bringing it back around. You know what? Forget this movie. What else? <laughs> watch this week? What else has been rebooted for network television yeah. that yeah. we don't care for? Adventures in Babysitting. There was, there was a TV show. There was show. a thing, wasn't yeah. it? Right. Hawaii but now there's so like, long? but no Vincent D'Onofrio. But there's also TV shows that people watch who they don't know there was a movie, like <laughs> yeah. Mash, Buffy the Vampire right. Slayer, mm-hmm. right? You know mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. It's like, I imagine some teenagers would scream the TV series. Probably, yeah. know, probably think that. That's unfortunate. <laughs> well, um, okay, so so, yeah. so this Tremors too. So Tremors too. I mean, what do we got here? It's basically it's, we're going to have Fred Ward because we don't have Kevin Bacon, mm-hmm. and Fred Ward was a movie star, right? Yeah, what, was was his, what was his biggest stuff? What would uh, you say? Shortcuts. Okay. Huh? Shortcuts. I don't even. I'm gonna look yeah, this he up. Wasn't I don't that, even know. It seems like he was in one of the Batman movies. As like, I see him in uh, Batman. I thought he was in one of the Christopher Nolan ones. As like a police lieutenant or something. Nope. I see him like okay, he's in something. Oh, he's a cop, and he was a cop in some show. I think. Hold on. Was it a show or a movie? Fred Ward. He was in Remo Williams. The Adventure Begins. I remember right. being in that in the eighties. Uh, every once in a while, it seems like he would show up. I can't remember. Yeah, was he a starring role? In a lot of stuff, you got to go back to like I'm go eighty five. I'm going from the beginning. Uh, ooh, Ginger in the morning. No idea. No, nope. that was in 1974. Uh, the one episode. Okay, eighties, 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 eighties. Escape from Alcatraz. Or the Clint Eastwood he was, movie. He was in two episodes of The Incredible Hulk. Cardiac Arrest. Yeah, but we're still not into like no, no prime Carney. starring Time Rider. Oh yeah, <laughs> there we go. Uh, the did Adventure we do that of Lyle Swan. He did that was on Lyle this Swan. show, I think. We did uh, Time Rider. Did we? Did you guys? I wasn't here for that one. I think so. Shit, because we talked about it forever. And I have that Blu-ray, and I tried to sell it once. And they were like, "You might want to nah. take this back, sir, because it's actually worth money." And like, we can't sell it. They like, actually told you that. Yeah, they don't yeah. usually. They're usually like, like, "Oh, yikes, it thanks. And It's like worth like forty bucks or something like that, or maybe That's more. Pretty good. Oh, yeah, Time Rider. It's not bad. The Adventures of Lyle Swan. Hold on to that. Uh, the Right Stuff. He played Gus Grissom. That, yeah, God damn it. The this right is where my memory's from. I go. just fucking watched that movie this year. Silkwood, Uncommon Valor. Yeah, so he was in big movies, Swing big shit. drama films. In, uh, Remo Williams, yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to find... <laughs> Euphoria, U-F-O-R-I-A. <laughs> like, oh, uh, no. ufo aria You got to find the whatever he was a police officer in. Or, the like, Hitchhiker. Off limits. Oh, he was the dad. He was in uh, True Detective season two. He was uh, a Colin Farrell's dad. Oh, oh. That recently. Uh, in one of my favorite movies, Big Business. <laughs> that is a good movie. I like it. Was like Judge movie. Reinhold or somebody who's in there. That's uh, Bette Midler mm-hmm. and uh, what's her name? Um, from Grace and Frankie and tons of other shit. Lily Tomlin. Okay. Uh, play two sets of twins, I one from a small poster. town, one from the big city, yeah. and they come to town, 
and they switch places and it's wow you and i had very different childhoods <laughs> we did. yeah we were watching we did. i watched a lot movies. more bet miller than i than I, I thought i yeah. did and now it's coming up that's uh, shut up it's a good movie <laughs> uh, oh, i don't doubt it trimmers uh catch fire miami blues yeah my he was a star in miami blues henry henry and june yeah he was a star in that the first nc17 movie if i remember correctly. oh yeah okay yep American isn't Playhouse. that benny and june no, Henry and June is uh, Henry. Oh God, the guy who wrote. Um, I'm man. I am totally having fucking brain farts now. Man. Tropic of Cancer and all that. Mm, oh, gotcha. like okay. Erotic yep. novels and yeah. Right. Cast a deadly spell. The dark wind. He's a cast a de- deadly spell. He played oh, like he Howard did. Phillips Lovecraft. Yes, he did. Harry Philip Lovecraft. Yeah. that's funny. Or Harry Philip Lovecraft. Okay, well we don't okay, need this anyway, entire. Yeah, we don't yeah, have to go through his filmography. Whole thing. Are you yeah. sure? But, yeah, yeah. Uh, shortcuts, like you said. So he was, he basically returns to this playing the same character. He's uh, a rancher in this one because, uh, you know, Val, uh, that's the Valentine, that's yes. Kevin Bacon's character, has gone off, got married, and got the fuck out of the movie series. Which, who wouldn't? Like, if you lived in a desert and you got attacked by underground monsters for like a couple days, wouldn't you just like move to a city? Yeah. Just to be sure. Yeah. Especially because apparently they're like rich and famous. Uh, the, apparently they didn't, uh, the story is that the reason he's out here is because he did not capitalize on what would end up being f- richness for other people. Fame he got, richness he missed out on. He missed out on the Graboids mm-hmm. video game. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. Although, Although he got a cabinet, you know, for the, he his did. trailer. They made a Reebok commercial, which, here's what I'm saying. You see all these DirecTV ads where they, like, go into the, all the old movies and they suddenly turn, like, they did a Back to the Future one, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden Christopher Lloyd's talking to the camera, it's like, DirecTV, if Reebok had any smarts, they would have got Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward and done this commercial. Who would that be for, Sean? Me. And That's only me. Say, there, there is the question. The <laughs> amount of money they would spend versus what they would make off that. It would- but it would be so good. But it would be such a small amount of people that would so get good. it. I'd go buy Reeboks tomorrow. More people would not get it than get it. I know, yeah. but they'd be looking it up. I mean, they'd be looking it up. There'd be a resurgence of interest well, in Tremors. I don't Tremors. know. See, that's the thing. Is there like a gigantic audience out there for Tremors 2 uh, Aftershocks because of the so. marathons on USA or TNT or whatever? Apparently not going. enough to get it in the theaters, but. Well, okay. So the, the, the thing, I guess, that this movie does is it. it tries to get him back into the game of uh you know yes. hunting the creatures so it introduces this new character which is basically the valentine stand in right right and like what was the but one who doesn't he's the audience character because he doesn't what, know what everything was the about the character that. traits of kevin bacon's character that they tried to replicate because basically they do that's what this movie does it gives you uh fred ward and and uh michael grosser back yeah. So it replaces, I'm sorry, I don't remember the actress's name, with like someone who's basically her and only this time a love interest for Fred Ward. Right. And then uh, it gives you the replacement, uh, Kevin Bacon. Mm-hmm. Who is this actor? I mean, whoever he was. Uh, I only saw him in like one or two. Every, I wanted to kill him. I'm just saying he's the I, he's the worst. There was a Cannot. couple times when he was doing some boneheaded shit about, you know, like, Get off the ground. What was his name? Gary? Gary? Grady. Grady? Grady. Get off the ground, Grady. He's like, hey, trust me. Hold on. Blah, blah. I'm like, this is the moment where Grady's going to buy it. Because I know Michael Gross is coming into this movie. Right. And we don't really need all these people. Maybe we'll get rid of this fucking guy who's just annoying. The scene I knew that we were in trouble was when he shows up with a, uh, uh, I, I believe Fred Ward was trying to like put the make on the female side. Oh, when he shows up with the chain. And he shows that this kid walks in with the chain. He's like, oh, look at this. I got this chain. But he can't even look can it behind the car and drag it. The graboids will chase us. He can't even walk and carry the chain at the same time, though. That's the thing. Like, it's so, yeah, like, slapsticky. It yeah, like, it's so slapsticky and three stooges I am just, I can't hate it so much. He he can't walk and carry a chain at the same time. He's, like, dropping it, falling all over himself. and He's just, enthusiastic. Like, it's... <laughs> Dude needs to dial it like, back. Uh, uh, Val Kilmer, or not Val Kilmer, <laughs> Valentine. <laughs> yeah, right, the Kevin Bacon guy. But that's what I'm saying. What, I must, what, I must he be was... inured to that character, having grown up watching it, because it doesn't do that for me. I don't oh find it annoying God. or or anything. And yeah. some of the stuff, I've, when he jumps over the rock and runs over and taps the gravel and runs back, like that's funny to me. So I must. Uh, I would kill be... this person before he could <laughs> just, get killed by anything else. I must just be used to it. 
having watched it so many times. So he's got to be the foil, I guess, to Fred Ward's character, who's just a grumpy man. Grumpy who's and doing a and... mission because he's he's an expert. The Mexican, well, it was in the Mexican army. It's a Mexican uh, petrol company, petroleum company, right? Mm -hmm. Seeks him out, and they want to bring him uh, down to Mexico because their employees at this company are being picked off by the graboids. There's a whole new cluster of graboids, and they're like, "We need an expert." And they're gonna. The Mexican army is gonna give him all the resources that he needs to destroy these things, mm -hmm. which of course begs the question of like, what do they need him for? If they have the artillery and all this, yeah, stuff. who gives a fuck? I, I, this the problem I have with this movie is the same problem I have with Lake Placid. There is no stakes and doesn't really seem to be a lot at risk. Yeah, everyone's kind of putting themselves in the situation. Yeah, they're going they're to putting the problem. themselves yeah in danger when they don't need to. Yeah, they I mean, seem like they're out in the country away. not bothering anyone. Right. We see one. It's just like Lake Placid. We see one guy die at the beginning <laughs> of the movie, and it's like, well, maybe he should just stay away. You know, like. Mm -hmm. I guess you guys are drilling for oil somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. My men are all dying from, you know, being killed by these things that live under you the ground. You say my men, but we see one person die. Well, he's represented. One person. But we, there's no one else around. He's by himself in that cold open. It's they all got eaten. He's the sixth guy to die. <laughs> well, about half the movie then is replaying the tropes from the original film that you remember, mm -hmm. which is uh, giant creatures come up out of the ground and they burrow through the ground and they're, you know, so you have at some point they, uh, the graboid gets a hold of this chain that doofus has hooked up to the back of the pickup truck <laughs> right. and tows the pickup truck about two miles, you know, uh, the thing. So it's basically like a scene from Jaws, except you're on right, land, yeah. but the, the chain's going into the ground and the thing's towing it. And I was right. like, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. Um, Those are the elements you have to play with. Like it's sharks. Yeah. You're basically like playing with sharks. But then the movie uh, takes a twist <coughs> in the second half because uh -oh. in the interest of evolution and giving you something that you haven't seen before, it breaks the rules of tremors and goes like, what if we had turkey buzzard tremors? That have infrared vision. They do. What, so we get predator vision. Like, I was going to say, yeah. say, I've seen a better version of this movie. It's yeah. called Predator. <laughs> Yeah, they hunt predator by, turkeys because the ones underground. It was set up in the first one that they, you know, can hear. They hunt the, by sound. Yeah, the smallest vibration on the surface attracts them. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of which dug is that. kind of yeah, but this movie plays fast and loose with that because apparently they don't give a fuck if you're driving around, but as soon as you put the chains down, that's when it's loud enough yeah. to attract them. The whole like what vibrations attract them and what don't is very fast and loose in this movie. And they have a seismograph, which I'm not even clear how this thing was working because apparently it's portable at some point. But whatever, it's basically it looks like a version of Pong. They've got it strapped if you've ever to the heard of car Pong. battery. Yeah. What? What's the sensor though? But they move it all over the place. Satellite? They take it's, it yeah. inside the building. Yeah. It's all over. It's all over remote. My Where friend. they can see it's like all wireless. You know, there's a big uh, white uh, square that says this is you. And somewhere here Did are you the not things live through 1996. That's as best as they could do, my friend. Oh boy. Um. <laughs> so yeah, the 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 big ones eventually uh, evolve. Mm -hmm. I guess as a, because they're thinking entities, you know, these, uh, what period of time was it? not the crustacean well, the, period. pre Cambrian pre, the pre Cambrian period. Thank you very much, Sean, for um, my you lapse on so ancient, welcome. uh, earth. How dare history. you? Um, so yeah, so I was actually kind of just like Fred Ward says, he's disappointed that they're not from space. I too was kind of disappointed that they weren't from space. That kind of would have been cooler. It gives them like some place to they go. They still could a, be a right. I mean, hey, they could be. They just they came just a came long to space time ago. from space a long time ago. Oh God, so, I want to see space tremors. But they've lived on Earth for millions of years, and no one has ever detected them up uh, until Colin. Uh, the people that have detected them have died. I was gonna say we don't know they, they haven't eaten, been detected. But then There's people just... go like, "Hey, Bob was just over there, right? You know how I mean, many Bob's missing persons there cases there are? All tremors, all graboids. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so." <laughs> Eventually, the thing it doesn't so it evolves. It doesn't really it like explodes. Right. It's not so much giving birth, kind of. It's kind of giving birth. Gives birth to the turkey. It's, gotten, it's, got, it's just got no avenue for the birth to happen, so it just kind of comes out of its stomach. I'm sorry. Did we did we say what the names of these ones are? Uh, shriekers. These are the shriekers. These are shriekers. Okay. Not named until the third one, but they are okay. shriekers. Well, I'm glad that somebody has cleared that up. Okay, mm -hmm. so the shriekers. That's right, because they are constantly 
Can Screaming. You that, uh, no, I cannot. I don't have the no. uh, vocal ability to make that noise. Um, they shriek. They scream you've, and you've it lets out it heat. Yeah, and every like uh, monster. They're kind of like raptors. There you go. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of like a raptor yelling. But that that I've heard that noise come up in some TV show or movie like later on. So that sound is out there, but yeah, that's the sound. Yeah, basically raptors. So the new monsters are designed by uh, were they Phil Tippett, uh, the guy who did Starship Phil Tippett, Troopers, was, uh, and, like Dragon Slayer, Return of the Jedi, and yeah. all that shit, and uh, Woodruff Jr. and uh, Gillis. Well, some of these I was kind of like for the first half of the movie when the big ones were showing up, mm-hmm. right? They generally because the budget has been drastically apparently reduced or yes. their ambition was too much. They basically have a big sculpted one, this big, you know, thing that they can set on the ground and then kind of puppet a little bit. Right. Uh, and go, right. And they have like the t- tips of one or two that they can like bring out of the ground a little bit and then go back in. Yeah. So they got that one, the one big one, and then one big one they can rip apart. But for the, the shriekers, they actually have some practical They do. Creatures. They've got at least like six of them. Yeah. And some of these, this is, I guess, where the movie was scoring points with me. It's mm-hmm. like, well, you know, it's a monster design. Like, I, I kind of dug that little practical monster, you know? It's a cool practical thing, yeah. Although later on it becomes a CG thing, like early plastic CG. Just yeah. Some really 90, bad CG 90, some really bad. Parts. You can even tell in this because they didn't, it's like they didn't um, remaster the CG shots. Because they show up and everything looks fuzzy. There's no George Lucas for this franchise, no. is there? I will tell you why that is. <laughs> oh, I saw Sean. Because this is a direct-to-video movie, and they figured no one Don't would watch it fuck. outside of VHS. So they mastered those things, like, on probably videotape <laughs> somewhere. You're maybe three-quarter, right. maybe beta, maybe three-quarter right. inch. <laughs> and now, like, when they're making That's the it. Blu-ray, it's, like, all film. Which I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there going, like, Sean's probably, like, loving the hell out of this. Because he's getting to see... On a big screen. For the first time. <laughs> this movie that he's like. Yeah. yeah. First the, time. The film grain and all that. And it actually looks like a movie. And then whenever it goes to these CG sh- It's just like, God, it looks like, like shit. Upgraded, uh, you know, VHS quality stuff. Because that's how they finished it. Yeah. Because that's where it was supposed to be seen. That part no in the third the act, there was like a handful of, of the Shriekers running at them all at once. That was the worst part of the whole movie. I was like, oh my God, that looked like N64 graphics. It was <laughs> yeah, terrible. Yeah, some bad ones where they're yeah. all running together or they're uh, stacking up on top of each other. Oh my God, yeah. 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 When it's just one, it's not as bad. When there's multiple in a shot, it's... Oh yeah, go ahead. So the uh, this movie is like a kind of a comedy. There's a lot of... Uh... They're trying. Okay, how successful were they? I'm curious. Uh, you both watched this movie tonight. Uh, I mean, you heard us. No, no one laughed <laughs> I once. I didn't hear a thing. No one, no one laughed once. I think I chuckled at something. You, you did. Um, I was Bert at something. If you okay, you I'm chuckled. I'm out of ammo you chuckled, for the first but time. I'm sitting in the second row behind out. you. Didn't even hear it, so it wasn't that loud. That is the only thing you went, <laughs> and that's it. I've seen it too much to laugh at anything anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. But at one point, you found it funny. Yeah. Yeah, I still find it entertaining. He I had a I, funny line. I, I, he, I smile at this movie. I don't laugh at it anymore. Oh, okay, it's giving you the nostalgia tickles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, what <laughs> we're gonna, that's what we're going to call it from now on. The nostalgia tickles. Yeah, it's not a full on. Uh, well, what gets you to actually laugh? It's the whatever. Right. It's just a smile. Like, huh, uh, yep. Yeah, I feel good. That's it. Yeah, not a, n- nothing for me. <laughs> Didn't nothing. I couldn't hear. <laughs> I don't know how to describe My it. My eyes rolling. I, uh, uh, yeah, a little bit. I, I could just hear the <sighs> without it actually happening. Yeah. I heard that a lot during this movie. Yeah. Sometimes it depends on how it goes, but sometimes we get vocal down here. Sure. When we watch a movie. Yeah. You usually kind of know which way it's going when it's dead silent. It was like, ooh. Oh. Mm-hmm. I was trying to give this like the best shot that it could. That's why I was saying like. I did appreciate some of well, that stuff for wrap ups, but right, yeah. I did like some of the stuff that Bert was doing and I did like some of the monsters, you know? So I'm like, oh, at least there's kind of cool monsters, in it. which I suppose is why you're there anyway. True. Is because they're going to give you giant slugs and eventually surprise you with turkey slug things. Mm-hmm. And then eventually ass blasters. <laughs> I mean, that's why everyone after they listen to this episode is going to go and watch the third one. I think they will because they're going to be like, what the fuck are they talking about? (laughs) What are ass blasters? Why do they call them that? Is it like the turkey one, except it fires fire out of its ass? Let's say it's got got like the body of the turkey one. 
With, but it's smaller, right? No, it's bigger. It's bigger. It's bigger. What? Yes, it's That's bigger. Some serious propulsion. It's, got, it's like a dragon. Does it have it, wings? It, yes, it's got oh, wings. Oh shit! It's got little wings, and it's pretty much got a long neck. And it sounds way more terrifying. Like a dragon head on top of it. So, so yeah. it doesn't have the tremors head on top of it. With the, it's like a it? version of the tremors. It's like a version of. It's like they elongated the neck on this thing. It's like they took this thing and went whoop and stretched it out, gave it wings, and shot fire out of its ass. <laughs> Was this and also black. designed by uh, Woodruff and Gillis? Uh, I think Who so. Who are Woodruff and Gillis? Tom Woodruff Jr. and Alec Gillis. Uh, very Sorry, famous. can you say that again? Tom Woodruff Jr. and Alec Gillis. There you go. Uh, two of the most famous effects dudes who have uh, ever lived. And they've right. done... I, it's you. Every time they come up, I'm like, name what they've done. I'm like, they've done everything. I can't even like name... Well, recently, Alien. They, yeah, Alien Obviously. 3, I think that was the one they got in on. And then, I mean, they've, uh, they designed, well, they were with Stan Winston. Right. So they did, like, I think Todd Woodruff has been more monsters. Like, he was the alien in Alien 3. I think he was the right. pumpkin head, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, later on, you know, as obviously practical effects opportunities kind of dried up, they said, hey, we should make our own movie. And they crowdfunded one called Harbinger Down. Uh, yes, and they got Lance Hendrick. Back. Uh, Lance Hendrickson to star in it, and it was like basically a ripoff of the thing. But oh my god, him... yeah, we talked about this, didn't we? Yeah, I feel like we've, had, we've maybe mentioned, it was we've off talked mic, about this a lot, but yeah, mentioned on mic. Don't they run yeah. uh, amalgamated dynamics yes, now? Isn't that yeah. them? Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yes, okay, well, there you go. So we do know yeah. our stuff, yeah, yeah we know it, <laughs> we know it, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is early work, no, it's not. This is right now, this, this, this is this is peak, yeah. So that's mm-hmm. why I'm guessing like Phil Tippett did all the like animation, probably. Because he's like fucking retired or gone crazy or something. Whenever you see him, <laughs> yeah, he's retired got, or gone. He's that's got it. the big Mel Gibson beard and oh, he's yeah. balding. Oh no! And he crowdfunded like a, I think it's a movie called Mad God, which I guess is why I, like he's crazy. Uh, but it's like a full because he's like nobody makes stop motion movies anymore, right. so he's gonna fund one. Not since I RoboCop two. I think that's what. He, yeah, right. Or well, the Coraline, sure. Harry Selleck movie. Those are the only ones that actually get released, right? Yeah. James and the Giant Peach. Frank and Weenie. Ah, uh, James and the Giant Yeah, Peach. those kind of things. That movie terrified the fuck out of me. It, it is. Which is James James, yeah. Movie. yeah. It's good, but uh, it's just like, that's I weird. I was like six or seven when that came out, and one of my relatives thought they were doing me a favor by taking me to see that in theaters. <laughs> no, they, I don't think we even stayed through half the movie before. I was like, I need to get the fuck out of here. Oh, really? Yeah. You're like, I want to go. The spider go. lady. There's like a She's, spider woman yeah. in that movie that is. I think she keeps starting to eat James. Yeah, it's. That I think that's what's a messed interesting up movie. about Harry. I think it's Henry, Henry Selleck, or whatever his I don't director. know if I could revisit that movie. Nightmare Before Christmas, mm-hmm. uh, James and the Giant Peach. I think he probably, well, did he? No, because Tim Burton directed Corpse Bride. Yeah. But he did Coraline, he did Paranorman, right? Uh, mm-hmm. right. Is that the latest one that he did? I think so. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. And that's a while ago now. Yeah. Yeah, there's been one. No, there was uh, Kubo and the Seven Strings or whatever. Which was that was a good movie. Was really oh, good then movie. he did because who did? What's the newest one from the people who did Kubo? Ah, there's a new one out. I think. Oh, um, the thing, the missing missing link. That's like oh yeah yeah. It's like a, like a weird primate movie, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a trailer for this. It's the same people who did Kubo. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay. So I think maybe that's, uh, yeah. Unless I'm. It's mistaken. not even out yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so he's still he's a stop motion guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. he used to be Ray Harryhausen. Now mm-hmm. it's Henry Selnick. Selnick. Yeah. Not mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I, I apologize. Mm-hmm. David O. Selznick. Yeah, that's what you're thinking of. I know we're gonna look it up, and it's like <laughs> that's not his name. No, at all. it's gonna be yeah, yeah. Um, so that brings us back to Tremors Two. It does. Where Fred Ward recruits Michael Gross. Who shows up, and then they have a lot of scenes that are similar to the first one. Where, because I mean, I was actually sitting there, like trying to figure out why I liked the first one so much Mm -hmm. during this one. And I remembered, you know, obviously it's a throwback to like 50s monster movies, radioactive monster movies. Yeah, like them, and, uh, you know, uh, like it came from outer space, you know, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Them is awesome. Um, Right. And, but I remembered like the simplicity of scenes where it all kind of felt like it, it just built upon itself. It's like now, you know, now we're all up on top of the roof of the, in, in this village and the characters are funny and they're bantering with each other but and the- they got to figure out a way to like, you know, cause the rule is you just can't touch the ground. And so they do that again in this one, but the monster's tiny. It's but like the- three feet tall and it can see through, it can see in your heat signature, but somehow 
one of their plans to get past the thing is we're going to take these uh, wooden doors from a construction site and hold that in front of us, and we're just going to tiptoe. Can you see heat through a door? I believe you can. I feel like the Predator could see heat through, like, anything. Yeah, he can see through walls. Mm. Yeah, you ever seen those heat-seeking bullets that they use in, like, eraser? What, Runaway? <laughs> <laughs> runaway? Yeah, they Eraser. See through, yeah, see yeah rail guns I've played and Rainbow shit, right. Six. You can, that's how you do it. You turn on the infrared. And you, I feel like if it's, I feel like wood is not substantial enough. I feel like it'd have to be like steel or something. I'm, you know I'm, what I'm saying? I am actually curious in the, if you can see that amount of heat through a door. Because I don't know. Yeah. I don't know cold. if this is possible. They looked like fucking particle wood doors that they were carrying around though. They didn't look like anything really, like really heavy duty. So I was like, right, we're going to get, uh, get a know. fucking let it, hey, seal in here. Yeah, dear, next week. dear reader, let yeah. us know. Let us know how Please. heat seeking vision works. Yeah. You can see we heat don't through know. a door. Yeah. Feels like there was they like, just hold the door some, in front of them though. It's it feels like, like there's some uh you could definitely spy see their feet. movie you know, where they're like, We're gonna bomb would, this house and we can yeah. see all these people in infrared. Like executive decision. Did they do this and that? I don't know. I gotta see that movie again. <laughs> but you know, like a wood door, it's not like a solid wood, you know, there's just panels. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, okay, whatever. Oh, yeah. Well, um, and you could probably see their feet because I don't think they're holding it low enough to cover their feet. There was one shot where they had them on the ground. Yeah. Dragging him. Well, one thing. shot, yeah. But well, they, sure. They were, I'm sure they weren't dragging too, them. They were holding them. Nobody was too uh, concerned with continuity. I'm sure at some point. Yeah. Well, and then that part when what's his name is in the like the dump truck bucket. Yeah, Michael Gross yeah. is in the he's in the uh, what the lifter. Yeah, part and of they a, can't see him a, even though they're like two inches away from him. I was they're like, below, they're below the lip. Yeah, because they're tiny. Their they're up short. There. Yeah, and but, they can't hear. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You yep. figured at some point evolution would not be on their side with this whole thing of only being able to see heat. Like they they would die out. What it, is? I what if know. they like went near a volcano? They'd yeah, be but fucked. They, these, <laughs> they'd these be ones, fucked. But that's the thing; these ones have never existed before. Like the graboids have somehow said we can't beat them anymore because they're blowing us up. That's what they're doing. They're <sighs> hired by the company and offer fifty thousand dollars a head, which I couldn't figure out how they were getting paid because they're blowing up. You know, how are they proving that they're killing like two hundred fucking graboids? They're blowing them up with dynamite. They turn to mist. Sure. And they're like, that's $50,000. I'm like, how can you prove that? But whatever. You know what? This movie's <laughs> fucking stupid. If they're, attracted, if, 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 if they're attracted to heat, why not just light a fire? No one lights a fire bam, bam, bam. once in this movie. Not once. I think not maybe once. They can, maybe they can tell too. I have no idea. Maybe they can tell too much fire. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But they I never got the into the discussion they, of the intricacies. The characters don't know that, though. Like, it's the characters true. of this movie don't know what the limitations of the heat vision but they're are. All on the kind, well, the, I don't think they're doing stuff like that because they're not hunting them. They're like they are the graboids. Use it as a they're prepared distraction at that point. to get well, away. They do, they Light a fire like, no, no, and no, no. run. They're, they're, no, no, but no. They so, heat up some clothes and put them yeah. on a clothesline and everything. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> they heat up some clothes. Yeah. That you're makes, not for that, Because that makes way more sense than just making a fire. You sound like you're not for this, Colin. Well, I mean, that was. Just I, burn a building down and be like, all right. Yeah, we'll and then it's leave. It's fine while you're watching it. it you're like, oh, okay. They're steaming clothes and putting them on a clothesline. But as soon as someone actually vocalizes. Hey, how come they just didn't build a fire? You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. That's kind of dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At Wait. some point, they hose Fred Ward down with uh, fire extinguishers mm. so he can evade the creatures. They get them all trapped in a barn, and then they blow the thing up, and that's how they take care of them, at least until the third movie. If you lit a fire, would they all just run right into the fire? Yes. I don't think they and would. And die? Don't we don't know, would. but we don't know because the movie never tried it. <laughs> oh, that's true. But I don't Maybe in Tremors 3. It could happen. There are ass blasters with fire. Yeah. Then you know what? How about what if you just get like a mannequin and or like something that looks like a human body and then torch that and light it on fire? That so might the silhouette, be a better, that the might silhouette be a better looks idea. like a person, now, so see, they go this for it. More for because it does resemble like a creature that they feel like they can attack. Yeah. Then that makes all, more sense than light die. a fire and they're all just going to run in and commit suicide. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that is something they will do. There's probably some self preservation built into these think. animals. Yeah. We'll yeah. never know. We'll never know. Man, I like the first Tremors. <laughs> it's really yeah, good, isn't the it? The first Tremors is a really, really good movie. Good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I think that was the appeal of it. It was like, you know, we're going to give a 50s monster movie, like, you know, in the middle, because they all took place in the California desert. Or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one takes place in Mexico, where it's basically like, we just, we're in California, right? Mm -hmm. But we're just changing all the signage. I mean, it's sure. it starts off in Perfection Valley, and then I swear to God, the film crew just like, 
turn the camera right, around. And now we're turning and around. Like, yep. And here we go. So there's too much like grass in this movie. Mm-hmm. It's too like green. There's, there's also there's, like, no grass. people in this movie. There's like what five, six people. I total think if you look movie? up the cast of this movie, there are like five people. Yeah. So this there's is no a stakes. Relatively there's no people. inexpensive movie to make. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're right. I mean, as far as stakes going, it's like. Fuck. It's becomes a survival story of you just have to survive the day or whatever. They keep on, but they do. But the they thing. put themselves in the position where they had to survive the day in the first place. So that's why it's like, if they didn't go there, they would. This wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, it's but a, like it becomes, problem. Like we're gonna go hunting the thing, and then it turns out there's a new version of the thing which we're completely unprepared for. And so because we're unprepared for it, we're gonna make all the decisions that people make who have gotten killed by these things in the past. Yep, which is. Just climb fucking, you know, ladders and shit and get up high and wait. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All we have to do, at some to point, the heroine actually said that. Like, all we have to do is wait. Yeah, she did say that. And then there was like a fade up, a fade up somewhere else. And I was like, this movie is never going to end. Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> I have a question, Sean. Because yes. they talked about they had in this movie, they had like the full use of the Mexican military. Yes. So, like, why was there never like a helicopter? thing but then like if a helicopter came in to like rescue them or help out or drop bombs or whatever would the heat seeking things try to attack a helicopter i mean the ass blasters would have to try and get them right in the third one that would make more sense an ass air, an versus aerial a helicopter. dog fight yeah there might is there something like that, that That's what I'm saying. there this might is, be something like but that. but this is what provokes the uh, graboids to evolve is that there's a helicopter there's a heat and source. we can't get it it mm-hmm. keeps attacking us so we'll right, evolve into all, a flying well, thing so we can deal with it. I, I don't know if you're making a joke. I feel like you are, but that is, that is like is the definition the of, of this works. well, it is. It's like the definition of like, we have to evolve because our, what we want to eat is up there now. Mm-hmm. So they turn into ass blasters and go yeah. up there and get it. That'd be, okay. <laughs> but that's another outcome of this movie is they, they were given the full force of the Mexican military. They could have just brought in a helicopter to bomb the shit out of everything and be done with it. I mean, who well, they make an he, excuse who knows for that them, though? though, because at some point they say, why don't you just send in the military? And the mm-hmm. movie has an explanation, which is like, none of these things are attracted to like the, you know, vibrations of people walking. If we brought hundreds of people here, it would be a smorgasbord and you helicopter. Know. You're fine. But they're not going to, they're not going to. Be drawn to a helicopter. Right. I don't feel. Well, that's not good. Not yeah, but if you've already got the baby ones running around, like well, they're once in the it third gets to the baby ones, movie, but they didn't yeah, know they, they were going to be baby bomb ones. Bomb the shit out of them. Well, they didn't know they were going to be baby ones. <laughs> but now there are. So, yeah. helicopter in Tremors 3. Yeah. I'm excited for Tremors 3. There's actually one of those, um, you know, like on uh, aircraft carriers, you get those big, like, double barreled guns where you just saddle up to it and you're just shooting yeah. like that. That's what Bert uses to clear out, like, 100 <laughs> shriekers at the beginning of the third movie. So that's you know, that's how he deals with those. It's not a helicopter, but I'll watch it in my mind. Cal. That's all you need. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'll imagine oh, it, and that'll I'm be enough. Here to tell you now, you're good. You saw two of them, right? You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. All right. Well, it's no added what, value. I know that we have kind of shown our hand uh, tonight <laughs> because uh, we talked about. Every other movie besides <laughs> this one. No, no, we'll come back to it. We'll, we're going to do our wrap ups. We're going to go around the table. You're going to hear our final reviews of Charmers 2. But before we do that, we are going to ask our mailman, Igor, to come out and bring us your mail. So, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. I think he watched the wrong movie. He's ass blasting around the room right now. (laughs) (laughs) He watched Tremors 3, apparently, in preparation for this. It's like Boogerman. (laughs) All right. Well, here we go. So, uh, oh, yeah, we got to let people know how they can get a hold of us. So they can, uh, you can follow us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. You can uh, follow us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can follow us on Instagram. For the time of your life. At Saturday Night Freak Show. Okay, well, I've figured it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Amos Martinez writes in, and he says that Tremors 2 is the best of the whole franchise. I've loved this movie since I was pretty young. Too bad the rest suck after this one. That's a take. Uh, that is a take. <laughs> well, every one of these emails are going to be like, <laughs> yeah. yes. that is an opinion that you have. <laughs> 
Michael Whitaker <laughs> writes in and says, I love the Tremors franchise. I was even a fan of the short-lived TV show. This one, number two, is especially good because it smartly made Burt Gummer one of the leads. Much like the Marvel movies, I've become somewhat of a completionist for this franchise. No matter how increasingly ridic- ridiculous it gets, I still do find it enjoyable. I can respect that. Yeah. Stephen Hayes writes in, and Stephen says, you're in for the best out of the sequels by a long shot. Kevin Bacon was missed, but at least Fred Ward and Michael Gross came back. Yeah, it's got that yeah. going for it. Rich Martinez says, nice. Good pick, Freak Show. Movie still kicks ass, in my opinion. So There's a whole is, lot of exclamation points is, on yeah, that one. Like, <laughs> this is, uh, Sean's got his fingers this on the pulse. for the yeah. people. That's right. Uh, Dan Dunn says, I love this movie as a kid. Sorry, that's another exclamation. I love this movie as a kid. I always wanted to wear blue denim and cowboy boots because of Earl. The scene where the guy gets his legs eaten and he's hanging by the window is so cool. And as a young boy, it freaked me out like none other. I always wanted to play the graboid game. Me too. That scene was cool, except we didn't see anything actually happening from the perspective we were watching. There's a lot of that in this movie. Yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah, a like, lot. Oh my God. Did you see what they did in there? They did this, and now we have to go do, and yeah. we don't actually get to see it, which I like. couldn't figure that out. Like, sometimes they would show you stuff, yeah. and they are like, oh, no, it's down there. You know, look over the side. But you never get the point of view shot? Yeah. Yep. Like, there was a lot of that where mm-hmm. I'm like, how come we're not cutting to this? I'm like, oh, they couldn't afford it. Mm-hmm. But they can afford the CG later? I don't know. It was fucking arbitrary. Uh, <laughs> Travis Legler writes in and says, I'm so excited to hear this podcast. I feel this film was from the era <laughs> where straight-to-video movies were still trying to be good quality as their theatrical counterparts. I love the practical effects of the Graboids. The only thing that would have made this movie better is having Kevin Bacon back. Can't wait for this. Please tell me Jaws the Revenge is around the corner. We made a drinking game out of how often you can see the mechanical mechanism the shark is attached to. Sean's nodding. Jaws the Revenge is in there somewhere. (laughs) Josh Zemer writes in Zemer. and he says Tremors 2 was one of those movies where I watched it way more than the first one because it was on AM HBO and AMC a lot. <laughs> Great choice. Pickles, which is his dog. Oh yeah. The oh, dog. Pickles. Watch oh, pickles. the first one. I'm showing the photo right now. Hi pickles. Oh. If you can see that uh, pickles, watched the first one, but didn't like the worm noises. So this was his face. When asked if he wanted to watch the sequel, oh my God. <laughs> safe to say he sat this one out. Oh, Josh, pickles. my dog has the same Chewbacca blanket. Our <laughs> dogs have the same blanket. So Hi, cute. Pickles. Oh yeah, pickles. Pickles, like I love pickles has a very expressive face, and I like it. Send us your dogs, people. And we your pets. See your Literally, pets. just mail the dog. Of your pets. That's right. Yeah, you can them. just send them to yeah, Igor fine. will take good care of them. Yeah, he's got like three in there back <laughs> right now. Got like a little farm going. <laughs> They're all dead, but <laughs> but he, he still loves them. He still loves them a lot. <laughs> he's trying really hard, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's getting better. We I just mean, don't they... have the heart to do the goldfish thing where we switch them out. <laughs> you know? right, that gets expensive with dogs. Yeah. This is true. About uh, two weeks ago, our episode "Man's Best Friend," Feline Fatale, writes in and says the cat swallowing scene was tough to watch. Poor little guy. Nah, that cat was fine. Ryan Handsome Jansen writes in and in says there. that scene was pretty fucked up. He got sucked <laughs> into that dog. Or, like that I said, somebody tunnel? grabbed that cat and just went yanked yeah. it through. Yanked it through the prop dog's mouth. Yeah. Uh, Simon Carter says on the poster, it looks like Lance Hendrickson took a souvenir that the T-800 must have dropped in the police station. It seems like <laughs> Lance That's survives funny. the shootout after all. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. That's right. It's That's pretty really funny, funny, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Back. That's pretty good, a good connection one. right there. I like that. Uh, G Money says Rottweiler is the movie you're thinking of. You'd be in for from the cover oh, of right. Man's Best Friend, but uh, this one is actually a Terminator dog, Metal Skeleton, really and all from Brian Yuzna. So you know the puppets are good. Ooh, oh, okay, yeah. you give me ideas. I'll put that on my list. That sounds interesting. That's right. Not the 3D movie Rottweiler from the 80s, but this was like from the 2000s when huh. Brian Yuzna was doing all the Fantastic Factory stuff in space. Right. Thank uh, you for that. Okay, so this one's a blast from the past about our movie. We did an episode on cat people. So oh. I think actually you That's might. a long time ago. I wasn't here for that. You weren't here for that. I was here. I, okay. And this is the 80s Malcolm McDowell cat people, yes. right? This is the uh, Nostalgia David Kinski. Bowie theme song. Yeah. yeah. Uh, gasoline. That is a good version. song. Thank you. So That's much so that yeah, uh, like, good Quentin song. Tarantino yeah, that he took it in and Glorious Bastards. Uh, Maya Madsen writes in and says, 
just dropping in from 2019 to say Colin is right about this movie and the rest of y'all are just wrong. <laughs> yeah, we didn't we didn't like that <laughs> no, one. Nobody I've, liked it except for me, and I'm like, it's a fucking goddamn clip. I've never goddamn seen sexy that, cat movie. but I love the original. I, I love the 1942 cat people. That That's like 1942 cat people was one of my regular like Halloween watches. Like, you haven't seen the no, the Paul I've Schrader never one? seen it. Well, you might actually like it quite a bit then. I think I might. It sounds like something I would like. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> John did not like did it. Did that have a net O'Toole in it? Yes, it did. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember a net O'Toole in that movie. Uh huh. John Heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A whole bunch of people in it. All right, yeah. so. Got a bunch. Tremors 2, the final countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Colin. Uh, Colin, what'd you think about Tremors 2 Aftershocks? Well, I didn't hate it, Sean. Okay, okay so there we go. We're going to go over that. It's fine. Like, I wasn't sitting. I was, um, you know, because I always say, like, what makes a, a movie bad is um, if it's boring. And I was sitting there going, like, am I bored? I was on the edge. I, like, this one was right on the edge of boring because I think, you know, you'd seen a lot of it before. A lot of it felt like, you know, like when we watch 1950s movies, like old black and white mm-hmm. 50s movies, and you have actors coming into a, a a four wall or three wall stage <laughs> yeah. and they say, you know, a bunch of perfunctory dialogue about what the creature is doing outside. And, you know, I'm like, that's the way that, you know, uh, future audiences from the year 2100 are going to look back at tremors. Two is like, wow. Yeah. Or 2019, I suppose. Well, I don't know. We're not quite there yet. Cause it still oh, yeah. feels somewhat. And you know, the people involved. Yeah. Once you get past that in, in history, uh, this is going to seem like, oof. Um, yeah, I just didn't, I guess that's a thing. I, I mean, I recognize the rationale for a studio to make this movie. Obviously, if the sure. first one made some money, we can mine some more cash out of that, uh, you know, right. that mine. And they got one star to come back. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then we made a star to carry on the other ones because, uh, you know. To grab that flag and run with it. But I couldn't see a re- legitimate reason for this movie to exist from a narrative level. There was nothing, you know, the first one was basically like, yeah, there's these creatures. And then at the end, they blow them up and, you know, you're done. And it's like, no, there's more. This is what you do. There's more of them. And, and I don't know. Um, I did enjoy the <laughs> the puppet work, the um, animatronics and the, the practical effects, which I guess, you know, the slimy goop and all that stuff. I was disappointed I didn't see more of it, which is strange to say for mm. the amount that there is in this. I did feel like they were they were hampered by a budget where, you know, it felt low budget that they couldn't show you what the scene required mm. for those cutaways I was talking about earlier. It just feels like parts of the movie are missing mm-hmm. and it feels like parts of the movie are missing because they couldn't afford to do it, you know? And I guess that did take away from my enjoyment of the movie. Um, I mean, as far as the characters go, they're just basically like, you know, talking about the plot. I don't know. I didn't think that there's there's no reason to watch this. There's no reason for it to be made. The fact that they made five or six of them is the reason I don't watch, for the most part, uh, you know, the direct video sequels from a hit movie. It's uh, this is the reason you don't do it. And it's kind of funny that you're going to say like, well, at least, you know, you got two of them. You got the good one. And you got the okay one, and then they go to shit. And I'm like, I think there was one, <laughs> and then they went to shit. But uh, it's just me, and I would say you can pass on Tremors. Michaela, what would you think? I, I think we've uh, wandered into RoboCop 2 territory for me personally, whereas, like, if you like this, that's fine. I'm not going to hold it against you. I totally get why some people would like this, but it's not for me. It's not a world I can access. It's just not something I'm super into or well-versed in. So this movie didn't work for me. The practical effects are fucking awesome. They look great. There are some scenes where they are really, really goopy and gross, and that works. And anytime they're doing practical effects, it is better than it should be for this movie. Oh, um, boy. But when they're not doing it, yikes, watch out. It's it's rough. But it's just, this. it's too slow. It's over long. There's no reason this movie needs to be an hour and 40 minutes. You could cut 20 minutes out of this movie easy. Um it's just it's just not for me. It's fine. It's it, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. I think you 
get exactly what you're expecting going into a Tremor sequel. Uh, I think it kind of delivers on what it promises. In that sense, it's just not something that engages me or interests me. So for that reason, I would pass on it. You hadn't seen this, right? Uh, no, I've seen the first one, but I had not okay. seen this I one. should have done a, pr- a pre- interview with you. It's like, <laughs> all right, what are you expecting from this movie? And then done gotten the reaction afterwards. I like it. Like I said, it's it's the Lake Placid problem of like there's not enough stakes because like there's you got five or six people in the whole movie mm-hmm. and it doesn't seem like there's an actual problem. It seems like you're going to try and find a problem in mm-hmm. in the sake of a sequel. Like mm-hmm. there's not an actual problem, but we need there to be one for a sequel. So we're gonna go cause right. a problem. We gotta force it yeah. just a little yeah. bit in order to get our characters into the situation exactly. we want. I got another question for you. It's like what you know because the tone of the first one, it's like it, it, it is a science fiction movie, basically, mm-hmm. more so mm-hmm. than a horror movie, right? Yes. It's like a science fiction film, but it has a tone that kind of, it's not spoof, but it is a light kind of It's comedic too comedic tone. for me. The I don't one? like it, but, but, at all of them, any Tremors thing. <laughs> It's too comedic for me. I think the first one handles it better than the second one. Why does sure. it, why? Because I sat there going like, I mean, I saw that they were setting up and you know telling jokes mm-hmm. and all that, but none of them work. They all none fell of them flat land. to me. Yeah, and I don't know. Is that because of you know us sitting around yeah. watching it? We're judging a movie when we're watching it on the freak show and just aren't sure. giving ourselves over to it or something. Or was it just like we do come here to judge? Yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, it obviously works for so many people. <laughs> obviously, people love this stuff. So I mean, if it works for you. Don't let me take that away from you. Um, it's just like I, I guess my question is if they're attracted if the in the first one they're attracted to sound and if this one the turkey babies are attracted to heat. <laughs> why are they not attacking cities? Why is it not a Godzilla situation? Because they're they're brand new though. This is the first, so they would. Okay, but what like, about the original yeah, tremors? Like Wouldn't the are. most noise come from a city? Why are they not fucking destroying a city? Yeah, since they've been here since the pre camp. Yeah, that doesn't age. make any sense. I think they get overwhelmed. In a city, that it's, I think that's why the, the like laws it. and structure of this world make no sense, and you think <laughs> about it for more than two seconds, and it all Plus, falls apart. Also, like when they get to a city, like how how do they travel? It's it's they can way more underground. It's way more difficult to. They travel. can go in the subway and destroy New York City. There's your tremors in New oh, York City. But if city. they came out like in a tunnel, they would just die. Why? Because they can't move around. They're just worms. They have to be in dirt to move those, around. Like, they only have little spikes to move them there. around. Yeah, that's that's it. I mean, there's a lot of cities that don't have subway tunnels that so you can crawl under. That's very true. Uh, there is, there is none <laughs> Dirt's of that. everywhere on this planet, so they can ostensibly go anywhere. If they can go to the Arctic, I think they can go to New York City. <laughs> I mean, they do end up Wait, in the Arctic. Do they go to the Arctic? Yeah, in the, the one in you the, were talking about. When they're in so they cross weather. the ocean somehow. They I go underneath I it. I didn't watch it, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I can't uh, claim to know how they got but there in that one. Let's pass on <laughs> Tremors 2, Sean. Um... I mean, uh, I have always felt that uh, Tremors 2 was the, if they were making sequels out of this movie, and they, boy, sure they did, uh, Tremors 2 was definitely the best of them all. Um, I have always loved this movie. Um, My watching of it has become less frequent in the years because there's, you know, I've seen it tons. I've grown up watching this movie, and so just over the years, it just becomes like, Two years in between watching and maybe like, ah, it's been three years, I'll put this in. Because, you know, it's all stuck in my memory. Um, you watch them, you watch all of them when you no, watch them? Oh. No, no. I, I, it's been for like anything, three, four, five, and six I won't watch. But like for three, four, and five, I watched five once. I'll never watch that again. Uh, three and four I haven't watched in like five years. Um, so it'll get to a point where I'll be like, all right. I'm going to go back and watch those because I love these. Um, um, I guess the idea of these movies in general, I love these monsters. I love, uh, I, at, at a point I loved watching the progression of them. I mean, they do get ridiculous. Obviously we've sat here and said ass blasters for the last hour. So it gets to ridiculous parts. Uh, old West prequels with little baby tremors, graboids jumping up and killing people. Like it gets ridiculous. Some would say bad. Um, and sometimes I would say bad. But um, it's always interesting. Um, I still love Tremors 2. Um, I mean, a lot of that has to do, like I said, with me growing up watching it. Um, I still had fun watching it tonight. Uh, I still really like this movie. I totally see the problems everyone else has with this movie. There's some bad stuff. Uh, There's some bad CGI. The jokes, again, at this point are just like, no audience today would ever find them funny. And I've gotten to the point where I'm just like, heh heh. 
and I'm and I'm done with it because like that's not why I'm coming to watch this movie anymore. So I completely understand why everybody would have a problem with this movie and not want to watch it. Um, but it is still it's still entertaining for me, and I like where they go. Um, I still really like this movie. It also, like you said, it makes me realize that Tremors is a really fucking good movie, and I kind of want to go back and watch that one now. <laughs> um, but I mean, I'll still. Well, if it's any consolation, I bought it after we uh, oh, talked yeah? about it on the Freak Show when we did Tremors One. Nice. You can go back and listen to that episode. <clears throat> I did pick that one up. Very nice. Um, I'll still kind of meander in this uh, <laughs> this Tremors Attack Pack. These four movies, I'll move in and out of these every now and again because I love this series and um, I kind of love some of the places they go with it, and it's still fun for me. So I personally recommend the hell out of Tremors 2. Um, I'll watch it again at some point. It's going to be like four years before recommend I recommend the hell out of it to a new audience. That's what you're saying. To, to a new You just uh, said you, know, you understood what, why a new audience wouldn't uh, appreciate it, but you'd recommend it to them. I'm pinning you down. I'm putting you uh, all right, if you're going to pin me down to it, uh, to a new audience, what do you mean by that? To people who've seen any of these? Who saw the first one. Well, like you did with us. We've seen the first one, mm. and then you're like, I want you to watch Tremors 2. Because it's awesome. I, think, I love it. I don't know. The longer we get away from it, I don't think anybody who hasn't seen it, anyone who, I'll say it uh, specifically, anyone who hasn't seen this movie by now isn't going to like this movie. So you'd recommend it only to people who've seen it yep. before? So I, recommend you go back, I recommend you go back oh, and watch it. So heck? it's expired. This movie is past its expiration date. God I'm damn it. Sorry. I love it, but it might. Yeah, you know what? It is. It I probably mean, I get is. Nostalgia. I like stuff that nobody, right. you know, I'm like. I don't know. I don't think any is any new audience. It's a very limited window of people, I think, of of new people who haven't seen it. It's very small. Uh, it's a very small window of people who haven't seen it who would watch it and like it, I think. I'm being realistic about the movie, I think. Um, but uh, I don't know who you are. Uh, talk to me. Let me know who you are, but I recommend that you watch it. I, and I say that realizing it's going to be a very small audience. So mm. I recommend it to those 10 people. You is might it, actually like, really like this movie. This is the person who might like uh, Lake Placid 2. And Lake Placid 3. <laughs> or Lake Placid versus uh, Anaconda. Anaconda. Anaconda or whatever Anaconda. it ended up being. Yeah. So for those people, you weirdos out there, <laughs> I think Tremors 2 is for you. All right. For those uh, for that limited amount of people. So again, uh, I still recommend it um, again for those people. So it's a, it's a thumbs up for me. Uh, I, 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 there it is. <laughs> I'll never give it a thumbs down. I'm sorry. All right. Well, that's uh, Tremors 2 Aftershocks. Next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Holly. It is Holly. Who's not You're here. Right. Oh, she's on assignment tonight. Yeah. Well, what's Holly going to be uh, foisting upon us next week? She's going to make us watch a movie. I'm sorry. I probably brought this on you guys cause by, say, by saying <laughs> I've never say- seen it, I probably forced it to happen. We're going to be watching Copycat. That's right. Copycat with Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver and Harry Connick Jr. Has that, it become a freak show movie? I'm, we'll find we'll out. We'll find out. We're going to find out. I think that's the worst thing you can ever say down here. Oh, oh I've, I've never seen, seen it. Yeah. Worst thing you can, yeah. worst words that can escape yeah. your lips. Yeah. Because someone's just like, I should know oh, better. I should it. know better by now we should all than know to better. say that. But. Well, my memory is it's a pretty decent movie. But, you know, so it's right. like, it's a, you know, well, we'll right. find Right, but out. I yeah. seal yeah. our watch. fate for watching it by saying I've never seen it. I think me and Holly might be the ones, the most guilty of being like, oh, you haven't seen it? And then just being like, I don't care what it is, you're going to watch it. Yeah. Okay. So there it is. Well, copycat next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, we hope you'll tune in and uh, follow us on our social medias and uh, write to us. And until then, we're going to pay some bills. The basement is going dark.